Hello and welcome back to Reading Through Mark. We're just kind of dipping our feet into this gospel to better get to know Jesus and learn a little bit about the scriptures along the way. Um, we are in Mark chapter 7 today. My uh, uh, translation has the title, Clean and Unclean. This is quite a fascinating section and it gives us a chance to talk a little bit about uh, Bible translation and things like that. So uh, let's go ahead and dig into what we have before us today. Uh, so we're again in Mark chapter 7. Uh, there in verse 1 it says, The Pharisees and some of the teachers of the law who had come from Jerusalem gathered around Jesus and saw some of his disciples eating food with hands that were unclean, that is, unwashed. The Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they give their hands a ceremonial washing, holding to the traditions of the el or hold the tr excuse me holding to the tradition of the elders. When they come from the marketplace, they do not eat unless they wash, and they observe many other traditions, such as the washing of cups, pitchers, and kettles. So the Pharisees and teachers of the law asked Jesus, "Why don't your disciples live according to the tradition of the elders instead of eating food?" eating their food with unclean hands. He replied, Isaiah was right when he prophesied about you hypocrites, as it is written. These people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. They worship me in vain. Their teachings are but rules taught by men. You have let go of the commands of God and are holding on to the traditions of men. And he said to them, we, uh, you have a fine way of setting aside the commands of God in order to observe your own traditions. For Moses said, Honor your father and your mother, and anyone who curses his father or mother must be put to death. But you say that if a man says to his father or mother, Whatever help you might otherwise have received from me is Corban, that is, a gift devoted to God, then you no longer let him do anything for his father or mother. Thus you nullify the word of God by your tradition." that you have handed down, and you do many things like that. Again, Jesus called the crowd to him and said, Listen to me, everyone, and understand this. Nothing outside a man can make him unclean by going into him. Rather, it is what comes out of a man that makes him, un him unclean. After he had left the crowd and entered the house, his disciples asked him about this parable. Are you so dull? he asked. Don't you see that nothing enters a man from the outside, nothing that enters a man from the outside can make him unclean? For it doesn't go into his heart, but into his stomach, and then out of his body. In saying this, Jesus declared all foods clean. He went on, what comes out of a man is what makes him unclean. For from within, out of men's hearts, come evil thoughts, sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, greed, malice, deceit, lewdness, envy, slander, arrogance, and folly. All these evils come from inside and make a man unclean. This is God's word. Quite a fascinating section here. Once again, um, one again very common criticism of Christianity today is the um, corruptions within the church itself and especially among the leadership. Um, and again, that's something for us all to take very seriously uh, because Jesus himself took that very seriously. Uh, and the problem with uh, for, for people that make this criticism is a lot of times they throw the baby out with the bathwater, right? They throw out Jesus uh, because of their criticisms of Christians. Uh, Jesus was no fan of hypocrites either, right? And so we want to cling to those things that are from God while dismissing those uh, man-made laws, rules, and traditions that get in the way of our growth in our faith and in our walk with God. Um, so now here what we have is Jesus is teaching and preaching in Galilee, and we have a number of Jesus' enemies who are actually from Jerusalem. So again, if you can remember your mental map here, Galilee is the northern part of Israel, uh, and Judea, where Jerusalem is, is the southern part. Uh, so these Pharisees and teachers of the law, they are traveling quite a long ways from home all the way to the northern part of Israel in order to find fault with Jesus. Uh, again, they are hearing word about what Jesus is doing and saying. Uh, they know he's not a fan of them because he calls them out for their uh, corruption, for their hypocrisy. Uh, and so they're trying to find fault with Jesus. They're trying to find issues with Jesus. Um, and so here in this specific place, they find uh, something that the disciples are doing that is going against the traditions of the elders. Um, now, this is very interesting. Um, before we get ahead of ourselves, let's just kind of walk through what's in front of us. Uh, so first off, Mark in verses 3 and 4 gives us an explanation of uh, this custom that the Jewish people have. This is one of those differences that we see between the four Gospels. For example, Mark 
or uh, Mark in his gospel, he is writing to primarily a non-Jew audience. Uh, and so he has sections like this where he explains Jewish customs. Contrast to that with Matthew's gospel, where he doesn't really explain um, these customs because he's primarily writing to a Jewish audience, uh, but he does quote from the Old Testament script scriptures quite a lot in that section or in, in that gospel because he assumes that his Jewish audience is going to know those uh, scriptures. So again, it's fascinating to see those differences in the gospel and, and the audiences they are primarily writing to. Um, one interesting thing within the description here is the word uh, washing, the washing of cups and things. Uh, that's actually the word baptizo, where we get the word baptism from. Uh, there's a, if, if you have a Bible that has notes on the various manuscripts, you'll notice that uh, they do the washing of the baptism of cups, uh, pitchers, kettles, and dining couches. Again, very interesting there, uh, as a lot of people will say that baptism has to mean immersion. Um, I don't know how many people would wash a dining couch by total immersion under, underwater, right? Probably you would just apply water there. Uh, clearly that word simply means to apply water. Very interesting there. Um, <clears throat> continuing on though, uh, more to the main point. Um, the Pharisees and the teachers of the law are referring to the traditions of the elders. What's been passed down to us is the Talmud. That's a collection of legends, folklore, parables, proverbs, and uh, scattered remarks in the field of philosophy, medicine, astrology, music, etc. Um, the Talmud, uh, combined with the Mishnah, uh, with the interpretive annotations of the Gemara, all of these um, accumulate over uh, around the time of Ezra, and this kind of forms the... Uh, traditions that they are talking about. Uh, so these are added things put on top of the scriptures um, or, or taken with, in, in addition to the scriptures for many of the Jews at this time. Now, it's very interesting that they have all these extra laws about what they want uh, people to be doing, what people or what they believe is good, what is uh, morally demanded of people. But what Jesus points out here in this section is that the people are actually going away from God's will by these extra laws these extra man-made laws. And he specifically grabs out the Corbin idea. So Corbin is another one of those words that we just don't translate for uh, many reasons, right? Uh, so for example, uh, amen, that's a Hebrew word that means truth, or I, I agree with this, or I, uh, so shall it be, something like that. Um, but we just bring it into English. We just say amen. That's, that's literally what they say. Or hallelujah, that's another one. Uh, it literally means praise Yahweh, praise the Lord. Um, but we, instead of translating it, we just say hallelujah. So that in a similar way, we just get the word Corbin, uh, and this is a gift devoted to God. So uh, it, back in that day, if I pledged to give a certain amount of money uh, to the church or to uh, the temple back then, um, I would make this Corbin vow. Um, but the problem that Jesus points out is that the scriptures make it clear that people are to honor their father and their mother. And so Jesus uh, gives them a certain situation where a certain son has uh, devoted, has made this Corbin vow, devoting a certain amount of money to the church, but uh, all of a sudden his parents are in financial need. Uh, he needs to help them. He needs to honor his father and mother by taking care of them. But the Pharisees would say, no, you made this vow to God, and therefore you can't give that money to your parents. You can't uh, financially support them in their time of need because you have to give that money to the church. And Jesus says this is actually contradicting God's word. And so in this case, those rules of man have contradicted, have gone against what the Bible actually says, what God's word and will actually are. And so again, this is one of those places where we uh, today need to be very careful about the practices that we have, the practices that go along with our faith. Um, in any church, in any uh, organization of man, you do have to put together certain rules, uh, certain um, understandings about how you're going to organize, how you're going to gather together. But as Christians, uh, we have to make sure that we always have clear in our mind which of those rules are man-made and therefore are very flexible, and which of those rules are from God specifically and that are demanded among all people. Um, so in this case, again, Jesus is calling out those rulers for abusing this, uh, for twisting God's word in order to suit their man-made rules. Um, again, we have to be very careful against these kinds of, of self-righteous rules, these things that ultimately reject God, even though they may look very pious, they may look very godly on the outside. Um, it's something for, for all Christians to be very, uh, on, very much on guard against so that we do not fall into these same kinds of sins. 
And notice, uh, again, this other warning that Jesus gives us here. Um, he, he talks about self-righteous rituals, right? Um, so the, the Jewish uh, ceremonial law did set up a number of ways that the Jews uh, would either make themselves ceremonially unclean or clean. But the problem that was coming up here is that the Jews believed themselves to be good people, believed themselves to be uh, spiritually clean, believed themselves to be right with God because they were keeping these this, this list of rules. Uh, and Jesus makes it very clear that keeping a, a, set, a certain set of rules for yourself does not make you right with God. It doesn't make you clean. And the example that he gives is that, uh, it, again, in this case, they're specifically talking about food, right? And again, they're, they're talking about you should wash your hands before you eat. And again, there's certainly worldly wisdom in that, right? But washing your hands before you eat, while it might be a wise thing to do, it doesn't make you right with God. It doesn't make you uh, a good person, okay? Uh, and so again, uh, we need to make sure we're distinguishing these things. Uh, and Jesus gives the example that, okay, with food, right? I eat the food, it goes into me, it comes out of my body, right? And that's it. It doesn't make me unclean in God's sight. It doesn't make me good or evil. And so uh, the kingdom of God is not a matter of food or drink. What you eat or drink does not uh, have much of an impact at all <laughs> on your relationship with God. But what does Jesus point us to? He points us to how the uncleanness of our lives actually is what comes out of our hearts. And he gives us this long list of sins, right? Sexual immorality, theft, murder, uh, greed, envy, malice, all these things, right? Uh, This big, huge, long list. All of these evils that come out in our actions, in our words, in our thoughts, these things come from our hearts. And they betray the reality that all of us are totally unclean already. We need a Savior who can wash us clean. We're not going to do it by some adherence to a certain uh, list of rituals, list of uh, rules, or anything like that. We need somebody who can cleanse us from the inside out, and only Jesus can do that. Boy, that time went went by very quick quick today with that. God's richest blessings on you until we meet again. And I say, I say, I say, can't be that easy. And he said, he said, no.